What's up, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. Here we are in Venice, Louisiana. It's a beautiful day. We've had an awesome trip. I'm here with my good friend, Anthony Randazzo, Paradise Plus Guide Service. If you're ever down this way, you should definitely check him out. He runs a great guide service and um, fantastic operation here. Uh, one of the things that we've been doing this time of the year is we've been fishing with popping corks. We fish with a, a, a lure, like a... Um, you could use a soft plastic. You could use all t- all different types of things, or you could use a live shrimp. We've been doing that a lot this week, and uh, Anthony's going to show us how he likes to rig them. Um, there's not just one way to rig a popping cork, but I know you'll we're we're using braid, we're using braided line, and a popping cork, and then a fluorocarbon leader. So we're going to go over all the different knots that we tie to put that together. Sure enough, this is our standard popping cork rig, basically. We're putting a 30 inch or so 30 pound fluorocarbon leader underneath this cork, one eighth ounce jig head. You can vary it depending on the situation that you're fishing. Sometimes we'll we'll go a little bit lighter, but the important thing is, is how are you going to rig this up? A lot of times with braid, your line will get wrapped around the eyelet of the cork, and you can see on here it's it's heavy gauge wire. You know it'll it'll cost you some fish from time to time, so. A lot of people will tie a fluorocarbon leader to their braid and then tie the fluorocarbon leader to the top of the popping cork. One way to get around doing that and expedite things a little bit and still have a, a really solid connection is to tie a spider hitch. One of the cool things about the spider hitch is it's fast and easy. We basically just are going to double the line. doesn't matter how much, as long as it's you know more than about six inches. And once we double the line, which I have here in this hand, make a false loop like so this is the double line coming out and i'll stick my finger in the false loop make three twists and then i'll reach through that hole with both fingers grab that double line and pull it tight it comes together really really hmm. nicely there's not a lot to it it's faster than just about any other knot you can tie and now i've got two strands of line coming to my popping cork so Easily enough, we'll attach the popping cork to these two strands of line, quickly pass it through the eye of the cork, and with a little tension on the line, we'll just tie a regular clinch knot. You can make five, six, seven wraps with this double line, go through the bottom loop and back through the loop you just created. And the trick here is to grab the double line up at the beginning and pull tight so that cinches down your cork. Now you've got, instead of 30 pound braid, technically 60 pound braid above your cork so that you have abrasion resistance, the uh, uh, resistance of the abrasion of the fish's teeth if they happen to strike the cork, and the protection of when your line gets wrapped around the top of your cork. You might break one side, and not the other side and still land your fish. So it's a super duper connection. I do it all the time on every single rig. Okay, and then from the bottom of the popping cork, what do we have? For simplicity, I generally tie a uni knot here. I'm not sure why, but I've had the experience that this knot will hold longer than this knot at the bottom. Mm -hmm. This is another clinch knot. I feel like if I get snagged up, I can break this lure off I really need to with this clinch knot. That way, I don't lose my cork. I don't lose my leader. I just got this jig and the stubble that I'm going to sacrifice. So that part goes away. And let's just say I did break it off. Instead of going to my handy tackle box and grabbing a brand new fluorocarbon leader... I'm going to tie another clinch knot back to this jig head. And the cool thing about it is I'm going to tie it so short that I'm not going to waste any leader. It's just a clinch knot with four wraps through the bottom hole and back through the loop that you made. And carefully, we're going to cinch it down where we're pulling on the main line, not the tag end. Mm -hmm. And when it's done, look how little line I've wasted. There's very little line wasted there. So now I haven't changed the depth that I'm fishing. 
I haven't wasted any fluorocarbon, and I'm ready to go back and catch another one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the wasting of the fluorocarbon, that's one thing, but it's another thing in time when you were wasting time. If you have to, you know, if you're cutting back on this leader every time that you're losing a lure, sure. then eventually you're going to have to tie a whole new piece of fluorocarbon on there, and that takes time, and you it can sure be back does. on the water, back ready to go. And it's like about, that. about being efficient and about saving your gear so you can have more fun with it for time and time again love it i love it i like the idea of having the the knot at the jig or at the hook being the the weakest knot because otherwise you if this is the weakest knot up by the up by the uh cork then you're going to lose the whole rig exactly right? so and the corks aren't cheap you know these these retail for eight bucks fluorocarbon's expensive so you know we want to try to help our fellow anglers keep as much of this stuff in their hands as they can got it all right thank you anthony that's awesome great tips and if you are in venice louisiana or want to come to venice or Buras, give anthony a call paradise plus all right thanks See you.